Hi, I'm Ben Stiller, and this is my notes on a scene for Escape at Danamora. Don't do that. What? Make a fucking mistake and then pretend it's on purpose. Don't mind, that's for hacks. I'm not. I, I wanted to direct this because I just thought it was a fascinating story, the idea of two uh, prisoners escaping from a maximum security prison for real in 2015, how something like that happens, what, what allows that to happen, um, what were the mechanics of it, what were the relationships that developed inside the prison. So this is a, a scene from the first episode on the North Yard uh, at Clinton Correctional, which is a state prison in upstate New York. And uh, this was sort of uh, the first time that we see Richard Matt and David Sweat, uh, the two inmates who end up escaping together. We were able to film the scene in the real prison. It's an incredible space. It's on the side of a mountain in the Adirondacks and has this incredible view. And it's been there for over 100 years. Just a really unique environment where all the prisoners get to go and have their outside time. So this is uh, Dominic Cologne, a great actor. The person that we follow for this big crane shot to reveal the North Yard uh, for the first time. We basically had to get in and out in a day to shoot uh, in this location because they were taking away yard time from the prisoners. We couldn't get in there until right before we shot, so we didn't even know how we would shoot the shot. At one point we were talking about doing it with a drone. They wouldn't allow us to have a drone in the prison. They don't like having drones flying around prisons. These are guard stations, and basically that's where the four or five corrections officers who are on the yard will stay and watch over the three to four hundred prisoners who are out on the yard. So it's the ratio is not great if you're a corrections officer. This is known to be the most dangerous place in, in Clinton. Basically these are little courts that are subdivided um, with numbers on them. You'll see here a number like 120. All of these numbers refer to a section or a court like uh, here you'll see it says 121. So the hierarchy is sort of seniority in terms of what you know where, where you get it because the higher up you go in the yard the better the view is uh, out to the Adirondacks and Richard Matt and David Sweat were over here in this court over here which we end up getting to eventually in the shot so the idea was to set up the environment follow one of the inmates as he walked through the yard and eventually got to Richard Matt and David Sweat who are out there hanging out. I just have to point out this this guy. That's a, not a real prison guard. This is Herbie Liebers, who is a Teamster driver, uh, who's been driving with me for 20 years and making movies. Every time I make a movie in New York, he's one of the senior Teamsters and one of my best friends. And so uh, I, uh, he's also in Zoolander. He's the guy who reads the magazine when at the gas station and throws it away uh, before everybody blows up. So it's his, uh, and he's been in about probably five other movies. Um, very difficult to work with, a real prima donna. So the idea was we wanted to show the life on, on, the, on the North Yard as Odell, the character, was walking up to basically he's getting ingredients to make a hot toddy for Richard Matt, who is sort of the guy he works for in prison that uh, Benicio del Toro plays. He's walking up here and you know he's trading things because that's what's going on here. Guys are trading cigarettes and other illicit contraband. As he's coming up here, up to their court, he's got all the ingredients to make the hot toddy. And now you finally see the, the view that these guys are looking at uh, all day, which I thought was really interesting, just the um, you know, just how counterintuitive it is to be stuck in a prison but looking out at this amazing vast landscape and freedom which you can't have. Also what they're looking at over there you can see the smokestack to the power plant that ultimately is where the access tunnel leads to that they came out of. So that's the smokestack and David Sweat knew that there had to be some sort of an access to that power plant and that was where the steam pipe was coming from that was heating the prison that he eventually cut a hole into that they got out through. What do you think? 
I spent a shitload of time on the fur. Hmm. Where's the light coming from? The light? Yeah, like you could do a shot like this and with a wide lens and be close up and have the same frame, but then the background, everything, you know, everything behind them would be much further away and you just see a lot more and a lot more being focused. But this sort of like puts the focus on the actors. And just as a feeling, you know, cinematographers like Victor Kemper or Owen Roisman from the 70s did this a lot really beautifully and, and just sort of that was just coming out of, I think, the necessity to shoot scenes without um, being able to do long setups. So on a setup like this, we have the camera here. So there's the two shot and then there's the second camera. Basically, we would be grabbing as much coverage as we could every time we did the scene. We just do the scene over and over again as many times as we could. But here you can just feel like there's just so much texture here. The, even like the heat ripples coming off of the, the pot-bellied stoves behind them. And then here, what's behind Benicio is, you know, that's the guard tower down there. And so like, so all this stuff here with a wide angle lens would be much sharper and you'd actually know what it was. And when, when you have this kind of a, a longer lens, it just kind of makes it more just like everything stacked up, which um, just kind of gives it this nice kind of feel, which I, I always enjoy. Now you see he kind of goes from, from Paul over to Benicio there. That was our, our camera operator, just ba basically sort of freestyling and they, they had free reign to just go ahead and kind of go, okay, let's just go between, let's you know, follow the dialogue. Because we wanted to have sort of like that kind of roaming feel, but I didn't want to have like a super jerky kind of like handheld, you know, overly noticeable uh, feeling, but just kind of allow it to have um, a little bit of that sort of found feeling that to me, um, you know, in this prison environment, these guys are having all these different conversations that they don't really want anybody else to hear, so it's kind of intimate, uh, but yet it's happening in public, too. That's, again, I think another reason why the long lenses are cool, because they sort of focus you in on the people in an environment that isn't very, uh, that's actually very, you know, very big. A lot of this scene is also showing the, the dynamics between prisoners, and Richard Matt was sort of a kingpin. He's kind of a top of the food chain there. This is based in reality, uh, Richard Matt ended up painting a, a, a Joyce Mitchell's two pugs and gave it to her as a gift. They would, they would barter paintings for favors from, uh, from corrections officers and, and uh, it was a, definitely a commodity for them. Delight? I mean, you got two dogs sitting on a couch in a living room and I can see them. There must be light coming somewhere. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's from the window. Hello. Here's your window. Oh. Here's your window. I mean, you can't see it in the drawing. What, do you want me to paint a fucking window? No. You sort of see the dynamic between these, these two men who I think became friends really just for, because they had the sole goal of, of escaping together. It's really interesting to hear David Sweat talk about Richard Matt and, and basically he claims that he did everything in the escape, uh, all the legwork. Yeah, it's from the window. Hello. Here's your window. Oh. Here's your window. I mean, you can't see it in the drawing. This was an idea that Benicio came up with that I thought was really interesting, which was, um, you can see here, he is, that's a really bad arrow, he's drawing on the, um, <laughs> he's actually drawing on the, on the you know, table there, he's not drawing on the paper, and his idea was to show that um, literally the character is thinking out of the box. Like I said, we had one day to shoot the whole scene, uh, which is, was scary to me, because <laughs> it's just that thing, of like, all right, you, know, you wake up that morning like we got to get this whole thing and yeah it w went really well everybody knew their lines the guys were great with the scene and we were done with it uh i'd say we were done with like the most most of it by one or two o'clock in the afternoon when the light had then not gotten as good and then we were able to do go for the crane shot which is the first shot this shot in the scene was actually the last shot that we did of the day because we were waiting for the sun to get low again because when the sun's lower, it's better light and, and it looks better. This was, I think, was the last take that we did. We only had three takes of this because the light was going down and it was, you know, it was, it was tight. And um, every time, you know, the first time they did the move, they'd, they'd never done it before. 
and we didn't have time to rehearse it really, so it was figuring it out on the fly. That landscape and that texture was really a character and part of the show. Having access to the prison and trying to show the reality of this situation was what was interesting about uh, the show for me. That's why I wanted to do it. I was interested just to have the experience of seeing what, what really went on in there and try to, since it was a true story, try to communicate that through this show and also hopefully make it uh, entertaining, maybe. <laughs>